All right, so cool. Welcome back, guys, to our Jupiter explorations. It's been a pretty lengthy journey on this new planet we've been exploring. Just a sort of boring recap, like we we tend to do sometimes with some boring lectures out there. We began our journey with just taking a look at how to install uh, Jupiter. Yesterday, we looked particularly at written digit classification that involved, you know, large scale transformation of uh, the number of dimensions in data. And then the day before that, we took a look at some iris flower classification, which still, to date, mind you, is still one of the cleanest uh, machine learning uh, projects that I've done. Particularly down here where you have this absolutely gorgeous uh, diagram here, this one. This one that shows clusterization of these flowers is just, it's one of the most gorgeous um, images that I've drawn. Um, but we, we sorted that out and today we're going to be dealing with some spam email detection. So we're going to be detecting, given a, a, a list of emails, which one is spam, which one is handwritten mail. With that out of the way though, let's get started with uh, today's exploration. So to do that, we'll go ahead and kick up a new Python 3 notebook over here. And I'll go ahead and call this spam email classification. All right, cool. That's not what I meant to do. Perfect. So we're just going to start with a few, uh, with a little bit of markdown here. That's just going to really help with explaining exactly what we're working on. So, right, cool. So what we're going to be doing today is bringing together a bunch of data that's previously not meant for machine learning and what i mean by that is the data is not numerical now you can have numerical data that's not meant for machine learning that's what we dealt with yesterday we transform that data and we extract features from it this particular data comes in in written formats so it's just words and we know that we're training um mathematics based algorithms and so these algorithms are not good at that kind of stuff so today we're going to look at how can you how do you convert how do you handle that sort of data and extract features from it that are really useful um, with what we're doing. So to get started, as usual, we're going to go ahead and import all our libraries. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide the data needed for you to follow along with um, with this tutorial as a CSV. So uh, this is the folder um, that we've been working with. And in here, what you can do is as the very first link in the description, you can click on that to head over to my GitHub and download this SEC data. This is a spam email classification. And this is just the CSV that contains a long bunch of emails. It's actually not as long as what we dealt with yesterday and whether or not they're spam over here, as you can see. So this is some handwritten mail um, and then spam. So we'll import that uh, data set into our Jupyter notebook over here. And I'll just use pandas to do that. And obviously what we want to do for starters is we want to look at our file, we want to identify some sort of clusterization in our files. We want to see something that will let us know that our model can train off of that. The easiest way to start with that is I'm going to print out the data shape. So using this shape over here, and then I also print out a summary of the data. So the data shape is basically about 5,000 emails and there's only two columns. There's just the category of the email and the message in the email. So that's cool. What I want to do now though, is I want to figure out if we have any null entries within our data. What happens normally is people tend to remove null entries in their data without even checking if there are any null entries. So what I tend to do first is I can use this command over here to let me know if we have any null entries in our data and you'll see how it does that. It's a pandas. Uh, feature and all it tells us here is we have well a total of two columns and uh, none of them is null. So here where it says none null, this is the columns, these are the categories, none null, and this is none none null. So we don't have any null entries in our data, so uh, we don't really want to remove anything from there because well, I mean, if if it's not null, then what would you be removing? So what we can see here is that we have a category which is going to be the Y of our training set. It's going to be the output. But the category is, um, it's in text, right? And that just means that it's not just the category as well, it's the message as well. And that just means that we really cannot train a machine learning model on this data. It's going to be a problem. The next steps we're going to go through is we need to convert these into numerical representations to just help us 
be able to represent these inside of a an ml model and so to do that i'm going to use some new allocation commands over here what i'm doing here is i'm replacing the category column over here with either one and or zero depending on whether we have a spam or a handwritten mail. And so once I do that, what we can do now is we can go ahead and print out the current state of the data frame. And we can see that right now we just have, well, cat category one, this stands for handwritten mail, and then category zero is the, the spam. What I wanna do though now is I wanna split our data into the training and test set. So again, we've done this quite a few times. Once we split our data into X and Y, so the X is just gonna be the message, the Y is gonna be the category, which right now is represented in numbers. Then we can use a trend to split to split that data. I just wanna emphasize something about this random state over here. Um, people can find it confusing. The random state simply acts as a seed for the deterministic separation of your uh, data set here. When you enter this random state, if you run it with the same random state the next time, it will always give you the same result. If you want to get a different result, you can obviously always change your random state. But the cool thing is that once you use it, then now you can always use it again to get um, a similar result. That's a common characteristic with random, random functions where sometimes you need to add something in order to make them not so random because you want to be able to predict what they're going to output. So this next code over here uses a vectorizer. It figures out how we can represent every single word in our messages here in a numerical format that we can actually feed into our model. So again, that's one of the core patterns with this sort of model is that if you're training on text-based data like this, sort of like what you'd also feed into chat GPT and that kind of stuff, you always have to convert it into uh, a numerical equivalent just so it can actually be consumed by the algorithms. These algorithms do not consume um, text-based data or output it for that matter. So what we're doing here is we're transforming our inputs into numerical values. And then we're also just making sure that our Y data here is actually of all types integers. All right, cool. So once we're done with that, we're actually quite ready to start to create our model and actually train it. And this is the, this is, Shockingly, the easiest part, all we're going to do is we're going to use a logistic regression model and then we're going to go ahead and fit it to our training features that we just created over here. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter and that just trains our model. And now it's actually time for us to evaluate it. So I'll put this part in step by step. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a test prediction on our separate test data set like we had here. And then I'll go ahead and measure its accuracy over here. And then finally, I can output its accuracy to see exactly how well we're doing. It's weird how it's a well understood thing um, that in machine learning, we always measure the accuracy in percentage, but nobody likes to add the percentage. I guess I'll be the first to do that over here. And there we go. So we have 96.59%. I guess this is why nobody likes to do it as well. Um, and that's a really, really good performance from our model. So given our training data, the model is really, really able to classify um, uh, the, the handwritten mail from the spam mail really, really well. I don't know if this particular performance here is actually lower than what Google does. I have seen multiple instances where Google goes ahead and puts spam mail among the normal mail and the normal mail among the spam mail. I guess it just depends on how many emails, how frequently you get emails. But this is a really, really good score for our particular uh, training model. All right, cool. So in this particular video, we mainly focused on this particular part here where we're trying to transform our data from text based data here into something that an AI can, you know, uh, read. So this is done mainly using the vectorizer function over here that comes from sklearn and that's pretty much it so in the next video we're going to be transitioning into the realm of sequential data so we're going to be looking into rnns and we're going to be actually training one to just get a feel for what that feels like and that particular video is going to be the very last video in this series and from that time on you guys can go and explore jupiter alone it's been a very fun journey i will catch you guys tomorrow see you soon